Chris Gonzalez from Cal Track, Track and Field News, here with Daniel Simmons, Gatorade Cross Country National Athlete of the Year. We're now here in LA and Hollywood for the All Sports Awards. First off, how's it been so far? Dude, it's been so fun. I've been having a blast. The, they're taking really good care of us. It's been, it's been like activities, rest time, good fun stuff. I know it's really busy and hectic here, but I know growing up, that was the same for you in your household. I mean, the youngest of 10, is that correct? That is true. Wow. And most of them were runners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, this year in cross country, NXN second in a loaded, loaded race. Uh, obviously really strong in track and field season as well. Nowadays, there's just so much attention on the internet with who's doing what and so forth. You accomplished a great deal as a junior. So now there's a ton of attention and dare we say it, expectation on you. How do you kind of handle that spotlight, handle expectation, handle all the quote unquote noise and stay focused? Um, I just handle it, you know, a day at a time. I do, I do it in a way where I don't, I don't really see myself in that spotlight. I see myself, you know, working, run in, run out, on the field, at my house, you know, just living my life, doing what I've always done, trying to focus on growing as a individually, intellectually, growing physically, growing spiritually, growing with my family, and it's just helping me in every way I can for running and yeah. That seems to be a very healthy approach because a lot of people live on social media and that kind of almost adds or feeds the beast, so to speak, and puts pressure on athletes. Um, how often, if ever, do you feel pressure and how do you handle that? Is it something, something the same or, I mean, how do you cope? You already mentioned it quite a bit right then and there. I, I definitely do feel pressure. Like, I can feel it. I just, sometimes it gets to me and then, you know, it, like, I, I'm human. I think I, I've cracked quite a few times, but the way that I've, I've known to cope with it is just, you know, belief in myself, belief in others, belief in me, and, you know, just a, a positive attitude about what I'm doing. There is so much going on in high school cross country, high school track and field, so much attention, so much everything. It's just so much quality. Um, what have you learned most about yourself, would you say, this past year? I think the thing I've learned most about myself this past year has been mainly in the areas of where I'm willing to put in the extra step to grow even more or, you know, back away and let whatever happens happen. What I've been doing has been trying to focus on doing every little thing that I can that can make the hard big things a little easier, you know, taking those steps to make the big decisions that are hard and tiring making them, you know, a little easier by saying no to maybe something that could make me feel good in the, in the time that I have it, but after it's not the best, you know. In, in these times that are so totally challenging, if a runner comes to you and basically asks you for advice, they want to be really, really good, and, you know, they have some talent, if you could give them some advice, what would it be as to how to cope with everything? Um, I'd have to say is one thing that I have found out is that running, uh, especially, you don't want to do too much. Doing too much leaves you really hard. You can't come back from it nearly as easily as something else, you know. Your muscles need to be able to recover for your next run. It's really important for you to be able to run every day, get the right effort in so that you can get the best results back. I'm going to put you in the spot a little bit here. Do you think that there are a lot of athletes out there, not naming any names and all, but do you think there are a lot of high-end athletes out there that probably over-race? I, yeah, I think that's one thing that my coach has talked with me a lot about. I did that my sophomore year, and I burnt out really quick. And you made sure this year we, we stayed focused for maybe one race every week, and then took a week off, you know, one race at the, at the meets, you know. Um, yeah, I, think, I think there is a lot of over-racing because you're just not satisfied with how maybe something went, and I think that's a big part of burnout. Uh, so you're here this year for to this evening for the uh, cross country award. Also had a very good track and field season. From your vantage point, how did you feel your season went for track and field? Um, it went. I think it went really good. It went. It went the best that I I probably could have put it. I mean, I, I put in as much work as I could to be the best that I could. Um, I didn't reach. All of my goals, I reached a lot of effort goals, but um, I'm not satisfied. But it's, it's gonna be good. I think it was a good season. 
what were you probably proudest of during cross from sorry, during track and field? You mentioned you didn't hit all your goals. What did you come away with feeling most proud about as far as what you achieved? Whether it be a performance or or learning certain particular, what most stuck with you? I think I think, you know, I, I would have to say my, my proudest moment was it was probably at um, the BYU track and field invitational. It was uh, towards the latter end of the season, and um, I, I ran like a 407 mile, and that was a, you know a higher elevation, so it like converts down lower. I um, I felt fresh, I felt really good, and I was I wasn't I was not sure what the results were going to be of that race, so I was really really excited to win that one. Yeah, and a lot of people don't really realize they'll see your times at altitude. And they don't realize just what they convert to. I mean, those are really studly performances up there. So obviously, it's got to be when you come down to sea level and major meets, you've got to be really confident in your fitness in that sense. Yeah. The uh, you know, last thing I ask you this: as far as track and field this year, or so many strong athletes individually in the distances, uh, the one that seemed to have everybody's number this year was Simeon Birnbaum. I mean, yeah. he finally was defeated at 800 this past weekend. <laughs> 1500 mile, 16, 3K, you name it. He was rolling. You came that close at Arcadia, that yeah. close. Did you think you had that race won coming down the straight? You're in the lead there. You know, I, I, I had my foot slammed to the ground. I was going all out. I was like, I really wanted to win it. I really wanted it, and um, I wasn't sure. I, I could. I had a feeling that someone was there. Someone was coming. It's going to be as close as it's going to get, you know. I didn't know it was Simeon. It, it might have been Rocky. I didn't know who it was going to be. And it was it was crazy. It was, I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Daniel, even though you've achieved so much as an individual, you're obviously part of also a very good program at American Fork. A lot of success, a lot of tradition. Uh, how special is that for you? It's it's really special. I love it. It's it's more than It's more than running. It's, it's a family. It's growth individually. We want to be the best we can, represent who we are, who our families are, who our team is. What are you looking forward to most this weekend, uh, this week with the Gatorade Awards? I don't know. I think I'm looking forward to, you know, just relaxing after this and knowing that it was a good, it was a good season. It was a good junior year. It was a great season. Daniel Simmons, again, our Gatorade Cross Country National Player of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you.